Diorama Asphalt. Works on almost any scale, really jazzes up a display, easy to make. In fact, that's what we'll be doing today, making some simple asphalt. Welcome back to Crafted by Metamorphic Customs. We'll be making this asphalt in three different ways. Each of these methods is slightly different, but the end result is fairly similar. I'll be using a different method on each of these two pieces of XPS foams, which I've cut out to rectangular pieces with irregular edges. Uh, this two used to be one piece of foam I've cut in half. And for the third method, I'll be using this cork board, which is actually a dining placemat that I got from Ikea. I think they sell these placemats in, um, in fours for like about eight bucks. The great thing about cork board is that it's easy to tear to make irregular edges, as you see me doing here. And it's very easy to cut. So cork board is probably one of the most common materials used to create asphalt or pavement in dioramas. Um, it's not my favorite, but it definitely works and it's probably the easiest. So we're gonna start off with that. I'm gonna use my typical Mod Podge in a disposable cup. Just pouring that in there. Uh, how much Mod Podge you'll need depends on how big your piece of asphalt is. And I'm gonna pour in a little bit of sand this is just sand, like play sand, dirt outside maybe, and a couple of larger, or a little bit of larger pebbles, uh, a little bit bigger than the sand grains. Making, mix in some black paint, mix that all together, and when I'm ready, I'm just gonna start painting this cork board. Now, I only put a little bit of sand and a little bit of those uh, larger pebbles into this mix. It's, it wasn't an exact ratio, I mean, it was less than a teaspoon in my case, but you might need to mix more uh, if your asphalt or pavement piece is bigger. In fact, you don't even have to include sand or little pebbles or the rocks for the cork board uh, mix. You can just use Mod Podge and paint. You're just using Mod Podge and paint here to really just seal it, give it that first primer coat before you go back with more colors later on. Uh, so go ahead and just apply the paint. Make sure to get the edges as well. The edges are important, you're gonna see that. And that's about it. When this dries, you'll see it's kind of patchy. You'll still need to apply some more paint later on. This is this is just more of a sealer with a little bit of back, black paint mixed in to help you out later. Uh, what I've done here is I've actually uh, just thrown a little bit of water over it. That's just plain H2O. And I want to make it a little thinner than what I had it. Just I want to make sure it goes into all the little cracks and crevices of the cork board. That's going to be important. We want to maintain that that texture there. So I just put some plain water over it and I just kind of mix it in. You could still tell it's black, right? I didn't water it so thin that the paint came off. It'll still be blotchy at the end. You'll still be able to see through it once it dries, but uh, for all intents and purposes, it's still sealed. It dries, you get what you see there on your left-hand side. We'll go back to that. Obviously needs more work. For now, let's move on to another pavement method using one-to-one -one Mod Podge to tile grout with a little bit of black paint. And I'm also going to add in a, just a little bit of those small pebble rocks. There they are, just a little bit. You can skip this if you'd like. But this is very familiar if you've seen my other videos. I use this mix all the time. One-to-one -one Mod Podge to tile grout with a little bit of paint and just apply it on. This will give you a nice texture. It's just a little different than the cork board. And our final method. This is a pre-mixed product from Vallejo. I love this stuff, but I usually don't use it for asphalt. And this is literally called asphalt. It's called, actually it's called lava rock slash asphalt. But I'm just applying this directly from the bottle onto the piece of XPS foam. And there you go. So, of course, when this dried, your splotches, that's fine. The point is we want it, it to be sealed. So I'm going in and trying to color this in, get all those spots we missed with color, and I'm going in with an airbrush and a dark gray. This is called German gray, but it doesn't matter. You can use any black. In fact, you don't even need to use an airbrush, how I'm using here. You can use a rattle can. Um, I've also filled in any of the spots that I might have missed with paint on the XPS foams. Before I move on, I'm going to do this on just one of the three methods. I'm going to put some street markers on this. And I've cut out this custom template here. It's just 
two long lines or two long rectangles about an inch wide, a little less than an inch. And very important, if you want this stencil to work, you need to use very high grade artist paper, also known as the back of a cereal box. In other words, anything that works will work. <laughs> As long as it's thick. It can't be a piece of paper you'll probably paint through it, right? It's got to be at least this thin cardboard. And I'm adhering it temporarily with blue tack. Blue tacky putty. Uh, you can use masking tape. And once I do that, I'm going to paint on, using the stencil, white. Because I want these lanes, or these lane markers, to be yellow. But I need to prime white first. Otherwise, this yellow won't really show up too well. So I used the pure white, and now I'm using a bright yellow doesn't really matter which yellow, doesn't matter which white. I'm using Vallejo colors, but feel free to use any brand. And as long as it's a bright white, a bright yellow, you're set. And then moment of truth here. Let's see. Looks pretty good. Don't forget to remove the uh, blue tack putty. What is this stuff called? It's great for classroom putting up, hanging up posters, but many uses. So once it's dry already, you can technically stop here. You don't have to go on. This could be your asphalt if that's all you want. It's already got great texture. I'm going to go a little further. I've got my sea foam sponge here. Love these sponges. You can use any sponge. Just try to pick at the sponge a little bit at the surface to give you an irregular surface. Then use it uh, to dab down. I'm, I'm using black to go over these yellow lines to make it look like it's worn. It wasn't just painted yesterday. I'm also using a brush to pick out some of the little rocks over it. And when I'm done, I'm going to go in with a dark gray or a medium gray. Same technique with the sponge. And this time I'm going to go all over the piece. This is to create depth and create more uh, worn areas. So it just isn't one color. Uh, it doesn't look like the pavement was just paved yesterday and this is pretty black brand new black fresh no it's we want this to be or at least i want it to be warm so if you want to go this far take it beyond just the brand new pavement look hit it with the sponge and then afterwards i'm using an even lighter gray and i'm just dry brushing this is a cheap one inch brush from the hardware store and i'm going at it i really want that old pavement worn pavement it's gotten very light gray and on the one with the two stripes, I'm just going all over it. If these are all starting to look similar to you, I think that's the point. That there's different methods you can use from really cheap to slightly more expensive and get a similar result. Just depends how you want to do it, how you have more fun with it, and the exact end result you want. On my right hand there towards the top of the screen, that's the uh, pre-mix. Bottom left is the my mix, half tile grout, half Mod Podge. And the big square in the middle, that's the cork board with basically just Mod Podge, black paint, and I'll just start off with. And again, you don't need to do this step that I'm doing now. This is just watered down FW inks. This is sepia ink, which is brown. A uh, couple of drops, maybe three drops to about 20 drops of water, really watered down. And I'm just kind of painting this on in an irregular pattern, just trying to make it look more worn. Again, I want to get across that old asphalt texture. And after that, I'm just going to hit it with a little bit more uh, of the dry brush of that light gray to filter it all or bring it all together. And the finishing touches here, just adding a couple of dark spots here and there and dabbing it. Uh, with my finger these are, this is just the watered down ink that i used before and that's it asphalt in three different but similar ways taking a, a close-up look here this one on the left is the one made with the vallejo product to start then this one on the right with the stripes is the one i uh, made with my own mix of mod podge tile grout and a couple of little small rocks or pebbles and this is the cork the thin cork uh, that was a dining mat I purchased from Ikea and I used Mod Podge, black paint and just a tiny bit of sand and a little bit of pebbles and painted it all up. And then of course for all of them I added the, as you saw, the sponging technique and then I went beyond that also and I added some watered down inks to create splotches. You don't need to go that far. But this is what it looks like. What's pretty cool about it is that this tends to work with many different scales. 
and you can make it any size, shape, any kind of footprint that you're thinking of. I kept it small because this was just it was just meant to be three different ways, three different uh, methods to make this. As you can see, it works with six scale just fine. It gives it a nice a nice base, a nice floor with some actual texture. Right, it's not a printout. Um, here are the other two small ones. Again, the end product for all three different methods looks pretty close. Uh, so it's whatever you want to do. If you don't have time to make your own stuff or don't want to, you can just buy the off-the-shelf product from Vallejo and use that. If you want to use XPS foam, you could. If you want to use cork board, because you think that's easier to start with, or start with, and it's a traditional thing to go with, use that. If you want to put marking stripes here, this fits with any kind of figure. It's a Terminator figure from Terminator Salvation. At any scale, some Giver figures here. I don't know what scale this is. I don't know if it's one. 12th or 1 10th, I don't know, but it looks cool with almost any scale. It can be sized to fit almost any space, a shelf of a D12, of a Magic case, anything. And speaking of scales again, heck, even works with a Master Grade Gundam. Guys, if you like this video, and I hope you did, I hope you took something away from it, please like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video, and until then, stay crafted.